Washington, which backed the revolution in Ukraine all along, is now calling for a diplomatic pooling of minds with G7 leaders in Europe. The White House says it's needed to coordinate a response to Moscow's actions. Well, for more, we're joined live by Martin Seif, Chief Global Analyst at the Globalist Research Centre. Martin, are we seeing a coordination in terms of a response? After all, Angela Merkel was saying that everything is as normal with the suggestion that France uh, saying that Russia should be or had indeed been kicked out of the G8. And that was, of course, denied by Angela Merkel. So are we seeing some sort of unity amongst the European leaders in their response to this? Not really, Bill. You're absolutely right. We are seeing coordination between the United States, Britain and France. They are very much on the same page. But Germany is the key player in Europe and Germany is energy dependent on Central Asia and on gas that comes from Siberia and also from other parts of Eurasia through Russia. And Angela Merkel is well aware of this. So Germany is taking a much more cautious position. So there is not consensus between Berlin and Brussels or between Berlin and Washington. And what about these threatened sanctions? Just how hard could they hit Russia's economy? Well, what do you make of these sanctions? Are they really that hard? There may, uh, it would be very unwise for the G, uh, rest of the G8 to go ahead and push with sanctions against Russia. It could be damaging to the Russian economy, but if that was the case, it would not be destabilizing from Russia. What would then happen is that the Eurasian Economic Union would accelerate in the scale very rapidly, and Russia's ties with China and India would not be negatively, or Iran, would not be negatively affected at all. Also, Russia would not not play ball with the United States and Western Europe on energy issues. This could backfire very badly on the West. What about the current tensions now, Martin? Putin has stressed very clearly that he doesn't want the situation to escalate and is calling for diplomatic uh, control and solution to this problem. But and yet, do you think perhaps we could see the US and indeed Brussels giving some help militarily towards this new government in Kiev? Unfortunately, I think uh, there's a real danger of this bill. And I think the previous report was very significant because it shows that Brussels, which has acted with great irresponsibility throughout this whole crisis, starting in last December, is finally very slowly waking up to the kind of allies it now has in Kiev. Uh, Neo-Nazis, uh, rioters, violent revolutionaries, anti-Semites, as President Putin said. These are very unstable people. This new national militia is a very worrying development. And Washington and Brussels, more Brussels than Washington, in fact, unleashed this uh, chaos, created this Frankenstein monster. And it's time they woke up to this and tried to rein it in. And how you, you describe it as a Frankenstein monster, could they go to any lengths, do you think, to get Crimea back now? I don't think they do, uh, because Russia, again, is organized, has facts on the ground. Militarily, they pose no threat to Russia or to the Russian presence in Crimea whatsoever. No threat, I stress that. But what they can do is create incidents. There could be an, uh, elements of anti-Russian violence in Ukraine. There could be flashpoints and clashes in eastern Ukraine. There could be clashes on the new Ukrainian-Crimean border. And then popular pressure might well mount on President Obama to uh, take a more forceful uh, anti-Russian position. We already have U.S. Air Force F-16s deployed in Poland. We have Vice President Joe Biden sent to Poland. I think it's striking that it was the Vice President who was sent to Poland and not Secretary John Kerry, who would be a much more cautious and restraining influence. This is not a positive sign. And of course, many would say you would label this government as a, a Frankenstein monster, as it were, but surely the EU and the U.S would recognize that element. Isn't it surprising? Most people say to you, why on earth would they be doing business with that sort of government? I think there's an enormous naivete and in Washington and in Brussels, and a great arrogance in Brussels. They were perfectly happy to do business with President Yanukovych, who, as your report rightly stressed, and as President Putin rightly stressed, was a democratically elected president of a constitutional democratic free state. Uh, he finally decided that he did not want to go ahead with an association agreement with the European Union. Within a matter of weeks, he had been toppled in a violent 
Revolution. Now, this is a very dangerous precedent and development in Europe, and yet the European Union and uh, senior Western politicians, including Senator John McCain, who was Republican nominee for president in 2008 in this country, in the US, they all went to Kiev and they fanned the flames of revolution. This was a very dangerous and irresponsible precedent. Martin, thank you very much indeed for your thoughts. Great to talk to you live from Washington. Martin Seif there on RT International. Thank Always you. a pleasure. Thank you, Bill. Thank you.